Hi guys, Putin here with a game of my tier 9 French cruisers of St. Louis. <clears throat> now the captain skulls are going to look very familiar because it is the captain from the Charles Macau. So I fire a target, expert marksman, last stand, superintendent, demo expert, concealment, and AFT. My modules are protect my guns, longer AA, faster reload, protect my steering, but a rudder shift and more concealment. <clears throat> now I've not truly been enjoying my time going up the French cruiser line, but uh, this ship I have been having a little bit more success, a little bit more enjoyment. I'm just not a, uh, an excellent cruiser player. Just I, I believe I'm just an average cruiser player. They are not my strong suit. They are more of a weak suit for me, but there is a carrier in the game. My initial game plan is to push up to the island that is in front of me, kind of park behind it to support any push to A. I think the French cruisers really do excel at the support role like the Russians do, as in they are a little, <clears throat> they are a little bit more long range support than uh, close range. Now long range doesn't mean you have to sit so far back you can't help anybody, but you don't want to be leading the charge, you want to be following the charge. The other thing these ships are extremely good at is getting on the flanks and just burning battleships down. Like I said, my initial game plan is to get to this island, shoot over it, if it turns into I can't shoot over it, just move over to the next island, which is kind of why you see me going maybe a little bit quarter. I wanted to get some distance uh, from the island just to make sure my shells can match. But I do suspect most of the ships are going to be coming in from the B side, which is why I wasn't too concerned with the big uh, mountain coming off the island. The other thing you can see is there is a cyclone coming in. Now, I usually play more of a kiting role with uh, my French cruisers, which means the Cyclone is going to hamper that ability. Uh, as you can see, I took a speed boost over a plane. I just feel like the speed boost helps me out a little bit more. The French aren't known for having a particularly good AA, which is why I've got defensive fire. Because if I'm going to be sitting in the back and following the charge, not leading it, defensive fire is a little bit uh, more versatile to me than, let's say, hydro. Uh, it's just standard hydro that is on the ship. But with the enemy team doing a B, C push, there's no reason for my plan to sit behind that island. Uh, I, I'm doing no good to anybody. I'm doing no good to the team. I might as well try to get up and give these battleships some sort of AA cover. I noticed that the carrier is really going after the DD, which is another reason why I tried to push up, was to potentially get up there and help our destroyer. I'm also trying to push up to help our carrier with the enemy fighters, but unfortunately... He loses them before I can get there and pop my defensive fire. I would have popped my defensive fire to help our carrier with the enemy fighters. Because if your carrier can win the air battle, it's really going to come down to uh, him protecting the fleet a little bit more with just strafing planes than my pitiful AA shooting them down. <laughs> took some shots in on Yamano because, well, really the only ship that I could see and shoot. I do target planes individually. Unfortunately, you do not get to see that in the replay. And as you can see by saying I was more or less like to play support role, I'm not getting too far from my battleships, but it's also in the back of my mind and I need to try to get my damage in now. Because once the cyclone hits, the 8 kilometers does not suit most cruisers, if not all cruisers, as far as their survivability 
your survivability really goes down big time if you run into a battleship. <clears throat> it's very nice. Uh, there's next to nothing for me to shoot at. At this point, I noticed that somebody did a call out uh, for to shoot the carrier. Which is uh, something I do want to say. If you are a slow, pathetic typer, uh, typer like myself, horrific speller, use your F keys. Your F, F keys are very quick. I never would have noticed that carrier if somebody didn't say, hey, look over here, somebody please shoot it. Now, I do know that this is the US uh, strike loadout, so I don't want to use my defensive fire on torpedo planes. I want to use them for his dive bombers because his dive bombers are his big damage dealers and I know that the way that this guy is sending them is one at a time so might as well save the defensive fire for one uh, is dive bombers are coming in I'm using my uh, torpedo indicator there to find out what the amount is doing uh, possibly torp the guy but I want to see if he's backing up coming forward and just want to see what direction this guy's moving in to uh, you know potentially uh, have him not shoot me you know save myself unfortunately uh, the replay showed that I was targeted on the exit I was actually looking at the Yamato not the carrier fortunately I'm broadside to the uh, Yamato and I believe it's the Hindenburg uh, not exactly sure who shot me. I'm going to assume it's the Yamato due to the range But I'm going to guarantee make sure that this carrier does die. It does give us an advantage <coughs> Luckily for me, I do survive going broadside to the model My torps are going out against them, but I do want to get distance. I don't want to play the secondary game I do come in to see what my torpedoes are doing. Uh, another thing is to see exactly what this guy's doing. Instead of double tapping the M to get the bird's eye view, I can get a better view if I just follow my torpedoes. So luckily for me, somebody did point out the carrier and we do stank him, which gives us an advantage as we have the only carrier in the game. The other thing is they are down three ships we haven't lost a single ship but we do have one cap to their two there's a cyclone coming in and cyclones completely change the way the uh, battles usually unfold it kind of does hinder carriers as in their planes or any plane can only spot uh, two kilometers so usually by the time a carrier spots something, he's going to do massive adjustments to do his drops. <coughs> if you're a U.S., it's a little bit easier because you are more reliant on dive bombers, and dive bombers are a little bit more e uh, easier to handle as far as coming in uh, than uh, torp planes. I'm going to take some blind shots uh, at this enemy St. Louis over the island because... Once again, there's not uh, not a whole heck of a lot for me to shoot at. I might as well shoot at something and just well, hope for the best. As you can see, I'm you know pushing up behind uh, the battleship, just the DD behind me. But we really need to get into B now. I know in this situation, Hydro probably would have been a lot better with it being a cyclone uh, but it's a coin flip between if you actually get a cyclone and well or not there's actually a carrier in the game as much as people want to say carriers are dead that's not true there are still plenty of good carriers and good uh, carrier players out there playing at these high tiers there are also an awful lot of bad carriers but still a bad carrier can get lucky just as well as a good carrier can ruin your day. So it's a coin flip on whether or not there's a CV in the game. Uh, I do remember that there was the Missouri and St. Louis. They were kind of creeping behind the island, which is why I dropped the torps. 
kind of hoping to catch one of them creeping along. Got the AP loaded. Didn't think this guy was going to show me as much shot side as he did. As early as he did, but I'm going to switch to AP because he's going to sh he is showing me broadside, so I might as well use the AP and see what I can do with that. At this range, it's going to hurt. Unfortunately, the Missouri had already scooted out from behind the island, and this is what I mean by, uh, you know, cyclones do change the way it is played. And I do not know if these storms were meant for myself or the model, but as accurate as they are going in on the model, I'm assuming the St. Louis dropped it on him. Now I'm using the torch to once again see what the enemy cruiser is doing. I would have sent torps, but I'm not going to take the chance to uh, torp our DD who is extremely low. Uh, I wanted to give him options on his movement if I sent torps. That gives him less options. Number two, he has torpedoes. Uh, more of them could do a better spread. He could do a better job torping the St. Louis than I could. But our DD is extremely low health. The St. Louis was close to his position. As I ended up killing the enemy Missouri, I'm coming up to see where the St. Louis is to protect, uh, protect our destroyer's health. Now, as you saw, torpedoes were coming from something. Luckily for me, I was able to dodge them. But I had failed to realize that it was the enemy Mogami sending torps. I didn't suspect him to be in that area. I'm still kind of set up for the St. Louis. I get detected. I've got the AP loaded. The Mogami is showing me an awful lot of side. I do believe he did send in random torps in the area, just hoping for the bust. Uh, <coughs> unless you have radio position finder and know how to do it, it's kind of a waste of your torpedoes, uh, especially for something like the Mogami, who can't, does get an awful lot of them. Now, luckily for me, I do a lot of Citadel damage to him. I failed to load the AP in hopes that the, or failed to load the HE in hopes that this guy was going to show me on the side. But if it's loaded, I might as well shoot it and then switch the ammo type to load back the HE. So another thing that the replays don't show is me switching between ammo types. So if you do see me switching from uh, HE to AP after a after I fire the gun, it is because I did pre-select them. Gonna take shots in on St. Louis because I know these are gonna be fairly accurate uh, shots because I fired them just as he disappeared. I am kind of doing all a little bit of a turn to try to get these torps into play. I have a fairly decent idea of where he is, where he's going. And foot and mouth about dropping random torps without having radio position finder. But I felt confident enough in my ability to do it. And it was really more or less sending these as uh, push the gentleman away from me than trying to get hits. As I run across turpits and now I'm praying to God the torpedoes luckily hit the turpits. But I'm going to switch targets to the St. Louis because I know his damage can is down. He did use it on the fire. Unfortunately, I was targeted on the turpits and I do very little. But these two are so close that for whatever reason, the game, the, the replay's not showing you is I actually have the St. Louis targeted, not the turpits. Which is why I'm getting a little bit more accurate shots on the St. Louis, but these two are so close that my shell is just start making it over the turpitz's <coughs> superstructure to actually hit the St. Louis. <clears throat> Get my snaring knocked out, which is why I run last stand on these things. Select the turpitz for torpedoes. Notice this guy's turning in. Drop the torpedoes well behind the indicator because these torpedoes are slow. I suspect this guy's going to make the turn before it does, but the reason I turn in is because I want to use this island to heal up, break concealment, and just 
will not be shot at anymore. We are winning. We have the ship lead. And more importantly, I am worth more points than uh, my potential for doing damage. As I get spotted, get my torpedo tubes and past it. I believe it was the Hindenburg Fire HE. As my torpedoes hammer home the kill on the poor turpits. Now this guy's firing HE. I do believe he would have been better off firing AP at me. Because uh, German AP, for what I'm showing him, could have been doing a lot better damage. But with the initial buff to German HE, there's even more HE spammers out there. I get spotted again. As you can see, I'm at extremely low health. Gonna cut my speed. Wish I had AP loaded. Because I might have been able to potentially finish off the Mogami. But as you can see by the scores here, we are quickly going to wrap this game up. I am going to survive with extremely low health. And now we're going to look at the post-battle results. Walk away with the Dreadnought. 109,000 damage. One assist to base cap. And with the three ships I killed, base experience of 2,300. I walked away with some money. Uh, but I'm not playing my high tiers to make money. I have other ships that do that. What is it? 48,000 damage coming from uh, high explosives. 35 from the AP. 15,000 from my torpedoes, which I do believe it was the torpedoes. I don't remember anything else. I or no, just the 10,000 to. Uh, from the torpedoes against the torpedoes, I believe. 15,000 from the fires. I do hope you guys uh, enjoyed this replay. We do appreciate all the support you do uh, give us. We do read all the comments you guys do leave on the videos. But with Sneaky being gone, uh, Spider being a little bit busy, it's been a little much for me to respond to all the comments at this time. But I do want to say that, you know, I do read them. I'm not an eloquent uh uh, a speaker as much as sneaky when it comes to comments uh, I would just simply just say thank you so I am just saying thank you guys for all of the comments uh, now I just thought this would be a little bit easier but please remember to keep your replays coming in we do enjoy them uh, I do go through them with spider with sneaky being gone uh, the email for that is in the description please remember to compliment good teamwork good team players we are quick to report, slow to compliment. I hope you guys all have one heck of a fantastic day. And remember, please hit that like and subscribe button.